everybody, Shelly here. Today's video is going to take you from the underpainting of this little guy back here, uh, right through the research and kind of the thinking process that goes through my mind before I actually put color on top of the underpainting. And then once we go through a little bit of my research process, then I'll take you right into the painting phase of it all. All right, let's paint. So here you can see my reference image in the background on my computer monitor with a grid and my wooden panel and I've got my proportion tool ready to go. So here we're going to start off um, just getting some placement down. It's kind of a selective start type method and I'm using the one to one measuring. So the 12 by 15 wooden panel that I'm painting on is exactly the same size as what my reference image is on the computer monitor. So this uh, underpainting is done with uh, transparent oxide red and viridian green oil paint, a little bit of walnut oil down on the panel. This gave me a lot of time to work and rework the composition until I was happy with it. So that was a look at my underpainting and now I'm going to show you some of the research that I put in to this piece. So I started looking towards Morgan Weisling for my inspiration. He's a wonderful Western painter and he's just got this great way of letting light zoom in on his characters and letting them really almost have a spotlight that comes from in these surrounding areas. But not always do you know where that light is coming from, but I just love the way he uses lighting to create the stars of his paintings. And this is the one that inspired me the most for my painting. I'm going to try to use that same um, glowing lit, like a lantern uh, there by that cowboy's head. And that lantern's really giving a beautiful yellow glowing effect just on the face of the cowboy. So I'm going to try to copy that lighting effect into my painting. So I'm creating it from imagination but based on what I see Morgan Weisling doing in this painting here. You can never go wrong when you look to the masters, the people that are really getting um, their paintings done with a high level of skill. So you can look to them to see how they've treated a certain subject or lighting situation or composition. And this way you'll have a a masterful painter right there along with you on your shoulder looking towards you and teaching you what you need to know to get to be able to create the best painting that you can create. I know painters of all levels do this. They look to the masters to help solve problems that they're having in their own work. So here I'm starting to put in some touches of yellow along that left shoulder and upper arm. So the lighting effect that I'm creating is coming from the left side of the painting. Now on Morgan Weisling's reference painting, it's on the right side. So I'm flipping that. Not only am I flipping the lighting side of my painting inspiration image, but also my own reference image has the light coming in kind of on the right side. So I'm gonna flip that and create this dramatic lighting effect with putting that glowing lantern type light coming from the upper left side of my image. So being that I am the master of my painting, I tell you guys that all the time, you are the master of your painting. You're not a slave to this reference image that you're working from, you can do what you need to do to turn it into a really wonderful, masterful piece of work. I'm going to start putting in some of the dark so I can see where I'm going and getting this gun to really pop forward and put some 3D effects in. So I thought I'd mention to you guys that on my sjcportraitcourse.com website, I've got a 50% off discount available just to you guys, my YouTube friends, and it's going to be running through um, November 
December and I believe into January 3rd is the last day of the discount code. So if you know someone that would like a portrait tutorial video as a Christmas gift, you can always gift it or just treat yourself and <laughs> grab one at the awesome rate of 50% off. Thanks guys. I'll leave it in the description below as well so you can just click on it and head over there and check it out. All right, let's get back to the painting. So I'm just putting in a little bit of the butt of the guns because it's going to be sitting behind that hand and I just want to have that background in and then I'm going to go ahead and start putting in that hand and forearm. Those are leather cuffs. Uh, cowboys wear those often to protect their forearms. So I wanted to make sure I really get how the light is interacting with that leather, which is different than how it's interacting with the cloth of the shirt and how it's interacting with that suede-like texture in the hat, which we'll do coming up. I'm going to put some detail on this leather cuff, but not too much. I'm not going to paint every bit of it hard and crisp but just enough detail so that you can really make out what it is. And I'm gonna keep it kind of dark because it is rolling away from the light source, which remember, we're creating this light source that is coming from above on the left. So every time I'm putting a brush stroke in, I'm reminding myself and I'm thinking about, okay, where's my light, where's my light? And also I'm thinking about, is there anything creating a shadow on the area that I'm painting? So with that in mind, then I move forward. And then I'm asking myself also, how close is the thing that I'm painting to the light source? Because the closer things are going to pick up more of that yellow uh, candlelight kind of color, yellow orangey color. And as you move away from the, the light source that is that glowy color you can see here in Morgan Weisling's painting, the things aren't uh, reflecting quite as much yellow. Now take a look at this Morgan Weisling painting. This guy's wearing a white shirt, but I can guarantee you there's not one spot of, on that shirt that is painted with just pure white. So my character is also wearing a white-ish shirt, kind of an off-white shirt. So I'm using this painting by Morgan Weisling as sort of a guide towards how that candlelight is going to interact with that white colored shirt. And here you can see my reference image. This reference image came from my photo shoot that happened at the American Frontier production in Missouri. And boy, was that fun. I really had a great time. These guys are serious cowboys. They're no joke. <laughs> They're not just pretending to be cowboys. They really are cowboys. So I couldn't help but get wonderful reference images and I'm really enjoying painting them. Okay, we're moving into that face a little bit. Now this face is completely in shadow. So I'm really not going to be able to put a lot of detail here. In fact, the hat is casting even more shadow across the eyes and the upper bridge of the nose. Now a little bit of light is going to roll onto that left side of the face and the nose. So I'm going to play with the degree of darkness and lightness and color until I feel like I've got it correct. So not only am I flipping the lighting effect that is on my reference image and taking it away from the right side of the face and putting it on the left side of the face, but I'm also changing the kind of light, the source of light that's happening in the reference image. Because my reference image was shot, and it was an overcast uh, late afternoon day. So there wasn't really a lot of great lighting effects happening. So when I'm painting this mouth, I'm putting in some of the teeth details and mouth details in the beginning more than what I, I know I'm not going to leave it there. So I'm putting it in just so that I can kind of take it out with other brush strokes on top of the 
the lines between the teeth and some of that mouth detail. And then here I have a little bit of light catching the, the hair on the left side and it's ha catching the butt of the gun there. So I'm just bringing in a little bit more of that yellow kind of candlelight uh, situation there. And I wanted to have a little bit of green on that um, leather cuff. I know that the green scarf is underneath, but I feel like because of the color of the leather, I just feel like there's a little bit of green that could be happening in there. I see it in the actual reference, so I'm just gonna go with it. It's my painting. I don't have to have a rhyme or reason. I'm just liking the way it looks, so I'm rolling with it. So we're gonna put in some of the gun. I want the rifle to be the vocal point of my painting. So I'm going to make sure there's a lot of contrast happening around this gun and a lot of detail. And that is going to automatically make it the vocal point. The other thing I'm thinking about doing is using high levels of color saturation to bring forward areas that are poking towards the viewer, like the knuckles of this hand. I'm gonna put a little bit more saturated color on the knuckles so that helps to push it forward. And also I'm gonna do that on the tip of that rifle so you'll see that coming up here. So as I'm painting the hand, I'm not thinking hand. <laughs> I'm just looking at it as shapes and I'm thinking about which planes are facing the light and which planes are facing away from the light. So you've got the plane where the fingers are tucked behind the other hand. That Those fingers are not receiving light because the, really the only light source in my painting or the main light source is going to be that lantern up on the left. Now there could be technically in this situation a little bit of moonlight coming in on the right side. So we'll use that in a little bit to create some reflective light. But for the most part, this hand in the reference image has the, the correct lighting that I need. So that was, that was good because making of lighting for a face is a little bit more easy for me but a hand is definitely more challenging, but it can be done. You just have to go slow and keep thinking about which plane is facing the light and which one is not. And here I'm putting in some nice contrast because this is also leading towards my vocal point. So I want these hands and this rifle to have a lot of contrast, a lot of detail, and really good uh, deep darks uh, playing against you know some of those highlight areas. So the turning away from the light is going to have some nice saturation which is along those knuckles which works out perfectly because it's going to help pull those knuckles forward and then where it's rolling away into the shadow you know it's going to get darker but still stay warm with a reddish tint but the light that is parallel I'm sorry the plane of the hand that is parallel to the light is going to be kind of a neutral flesh tone it's not going to be really too warm not like the warmth on the hand that's just pure yellow basically because the light is just scorching right onto it but that plane just before you get to the knuckles is parallel to the light so it's a little bit more neutral so these are the kinds of things that i'm constantly thinking about while i'm painting and i'm just uh here putting in some more darks i wanted to have a bit more uh, contrasty detail in that shirt so you could really see that there was some wrinkles and folds happening. Here I felt like the front part of his shoulder was a bit too light still. It needed to turn and roll away from the light more so Put some of that dark in there and so I'm coming back into that uh, shadow side of the face I wanted to I just keep darkening a little bit as I go so as I put in a little more detail in the shirt 
and hands and rifle and hat. Then I come back in to that face. I'm saving the face till last so I can really judge it against the lightness of the shirt and the darkness of the surrounding background. And notice I'm using my comber brush a lot. I've got it in different sizes that I've been working with it. And I'm just loving the beautiful rough brush marks that it's leaving behind. And I'm not killing them. I'm not blending them out. I'm just putting down a stroke and leaving it, putting down another one either next to it or slightly overlapping. And I just keep building it up. And some areas are a little more painterly and some areas are a little more refined just because I've laid more brush strokes down on top of one another. But by using this comb or paintbrush, it really builds a beautiful texture and atmosphere into your painting. And I feel like, I don't know for sure, <laughs> but I feel like Morgan Weisling may use a comb or brush, but he's definitely using a palette knife for some of his um, marks. I haven't used a palette knife here Occasionally I'll grab a palette knife and put down a few marks, but I think my comber brush really just gets me where I need to be as far as making some nice painterly uh, marks on the work. So I'm going to lay in some of this um, gun color here before I get to work on that other hand. I want to have the background in so that I don't have to worry about um, putting it in after the hand's painted. I like letting some of my brush strokes overflow onto the background and so in order to do that you need to have the background in, at least partially in. Hey, if you guys have any questions about what's going on here, um, make sure you just drop it in the description or send me an email. Also, remember, I'm looking for paintings from you guys for a critique on one of the uh, YouTube shows coming up. So send me your paintings and I promise to be kind and critique constructively. <laughs> I'm not looking to roast anyone. I know there's some painters out there on YouTube right now. They're kind of roasting uh, some of the artwork that people are sending into. I, that is not my goal. I just want to help you guys. And I know that getting critiques on my artwork is what seriously helped me improve. And that's what I want to do. I just want to help you guys get better. So it doesn't matter what level you're painting at, just send me a painting and an email and I will be happy to critique it for you. Just put in the email that you're okay with me doing it on the YouTube channel. And my email is in the description below this video. Just check it out there. So again, I am using one-to-one -one measuring. So I like to use the my proportion tool just every now and then to check to make sure things are in the right place. So I didn't have to make any corrections there to the length of the rifle. So I did have a good eye on it, but I know for sure by that check with the proportion tool that it's correct. So now we're ready for the hand. <laughs> Here we go, hand. It's funny, I think a lot of people feel hands are difficult. Well, they can be challenging, but for some reason, I love painting hands. It's crazy, I know. But as difficult as, or as challenging as they can be, just put it out of your mind that you're painting a hand and just look closely at the little puzzle pieces and put them in the correct spot, in the correct color, in the correct value, and then step back and look at it and you're gonna have a beautifully painted hand.
You can see there in the reference image that the bottom part of the hand is really in shadow. So I'm not gonna make the mistake of painting that in a light flesh tone. So when I'm dipping into my paint on the palette, I know I have my shadow colors at the upper part. So if I'm gonna select a paint color, it better be coming from that shadow section on my palette. So I'm not in a hurry to complete this hand. I'm gonna stay with it until I feel that I've nailed it. So you've got that shadow um, portion down below, and then there's a knuckle section that's hitting the light a little bit more than that backside of the fingers that I'm painting now. Those are not, they're a little bit more in shadow. Not as much shadow as the lower part of the hand, but they still are in shadow. And then there's a few little highlights that are gonna creep in there. And then the, where the fingers are bent, that part of the hand is facing the light. So you've got light, shadow, a little light, and then deep shadow. And I'm just gonna keep playing with brush strokes and tones and putting them down until I feel that that hand looks the way I want it to. And it's gonna take time. I'm just gonna keep, keep with it until it's correct. What you don't see in the video is that I do stop painting, put my paintbrush down and step back, I don't know, like three, four, five feet away from the painting and look at it, look at the reference, look back at the painting. I even took it and held it in the mirror so that I could get a different perspective and seeing it in the reverse image like that will definitely um, point out any areas that are painted poorly or if they have bad anatomy or think you know if something's really off when you see it in the reverse image you're it's going to be there noticeably and also you know after you i probably took about four hours up to this point that i was working on the painting and you don't want to work for four hours at the same distance from your painting without giving your eyes a break so that you can see the brush strokes and the painting with fresh eyes So I'm gonna continue working on the surrounding areas. I wanna darken up underneath that, that uh, railing that he's leaning on and the surrounding wood that's coming up and around that right side definitely needs to be darker. And then we'll get moving into the face. So remember, I have flipped my shadow side, so. I'm using Morgan Weisling's um, beautifully painted cowboy face here as kind of a reference to the colors that I want to use in the shadow side and the light side of the face. And you can see here how he treated this cowboy with the light coming from above and his hat is creating that brim shadow across the face that I also want to create here. So I'm looking at both of those as kind of just to give me a little bit of idea of how much detail I can put in the face yet still have it read as being in the shadow and the beauty of that is <laughs> I can leave out a lot of detail but I do want to put some in so the question is what's the right amount and the only way that I know to figure that out is to play with it so I'm gonna put some in take some out and uh, when I feel like what I'm looking at is what I wanted it to be it at, in the end result, then I'll know I'm there. So I want to make sure that these eyes look like that they're looking down at someone on the ground while he is up on a balcony. So they can't really be looking forward. Here they seem to be looking forward a little bit. So I do adjust that and put more of the eyelid over the eyes so that they appear to be gazing down. Now in my reference image, you can't see 
my subject's eyes at all, really. So here I am working strictly from imagination <laughs> and experience. So here's things from a different vantage point. Uh, you can see I've got my really large computer monitor showing my reference image in the exact same size as what I am actually painting, 12 inches tall by 15 inches wide. And then the Morgan Weisling uh, painting inspirations on the left part of my computer screen. So I have all that that I can look at when I need to um, get inspired or know what colors I want to use. So there you have it. And then I've got my vertical palette there with all my colors mixed up. And you can see it looks like quite a mess, but it works out well for me in the end. And notice on my palette, you can see I've got my light tones grouped at the bottom and then in the middle there I've got my mid values and then just above that you can see the shadow colors that I'm using. So when I'm painting in a shadow area I know I have to take from that shadow area on the palette. So I thought I'd let some of that lantern light spill onto the door frame so it's kind of framing him out and it's drawing the viewer's eye in a circular motion you know, around my subject. So the vocal point being the gun, it pulls you in, then that light just brings you up and around and right back into the cowboy's arm, back to the rifle. So it's creating this beautiful circular um, eye pattern. And I was inspired by Morgan Weisling's painting to have a wanted sign. So again, I am not a slave to my reference image. There's no wanted uh, poster <laughs> on the wall there. So I'm going to create my own here and use Morgan Weisling's painting as a little bit of inspiration for that. So I appreciate you guys hanging in till the end here. I've got a view of the finished painting coming up here in just a few moments. And uh, don't forget to send me some of your paintings in an email for a critique in an upcoming episode on my YouTube channel. And thanks guys. I will see you in the next one.